When you think of the term science fair, you probably think of this vinegar and baking soda volcano. Now, I, I don't blame you. I feel like that's a really common experiment that a lot of students have done way back in you know first grade. But science fair um, is a term that really refers to, I feel like, a process by which students are able to learn more about discovery, inventing, and experimentation through passions that they have in science, technology, engineering, and math. And the competition of science fair is just the vehicle uh, for getting that process going. And so in this video, I wanted to talk about my experiences in science fair. This has been something that a lot of my subscribers have been requesting in the comment sections that, hey, can you talk a little bit more about the competitions you participated in? How did they help you? What can we do to get started? And things like that. So let me talk about how science fair changed my life. Um, so I wanted to start out with the 3M Young Scientist challenge. And just to be clear, I feel like my journey in STEM uh, and science really started a lot before this, like way before this. This was back in seventh grade for me. Um, and so the, the 3M Young Scientist Challenge, however, was like a catalyzing step in my STEM journey um, in that it really brought me to the next level. Before I would be able to create, you know, an app, create a program, uh, you know, come up with an idea, build a prototype. But how do you bring it to the next level? How do you bring it to the point where, you know, you can write a research paper, like a graduate level peer reviewed journal paper? How do you bring it to the point where you have hospitals, where you have companies who want to use the thing that you made. Um, and so the 3M Young Scientist Challenge was one such step in that process that really was able to bring my research and bring my STEM experiences to the next level. So the 3M Young Scientist Challenge is this company hosted, or is this competition hosted by the 3M Company and Discovery Education. And it invites students uh, around the United States to submit a two minute video about their idea. Uh, so I pitched my idea on the pancreatic cancer deep learning system, which was this AI software that I made that's able to locate the location of pancreas of the the organ the pancreas in uh, CT scans and this allows oncologists and allows radiologists to better pinpoint the pancreas towards effective therapy towards effective you know radiation treatment um, and so I was selected as a top 10 finalist in the challenge uh, and this is where the 3M Young Scientist Challenge really is different than any of the other experiences I'm going to talk about because they give you a 3M mentor over the summer. Imagine being like a fifth, like the competition is for fifth through eighth graders. Imagine being a fifth grader and getting access to work with a scientist uh, who's like an expert in the field that you're working in or who's able to guide you along the process. Um, and so that's a really big deal. And I feel like that's something that uh, this competition has uh, is is it's something that's very unique to this competition, uh, the, the collaboration with the 3M Young Scientist uh, mentor. And so uh, over the summer, I was able to bring my idea to the next step. Um, I was able to you know, run additional validation. I got access to like a high performance computing cluster where I could run more experiments and build my model further uh, and bring it to that next level. And so when it was time for the top 10 finalists to come in October uh, in St. Paul, Minnesota, the 3M headquarters, um, I presented my research and I was fortunate enough to win the grand prize uh, of of America's top young scientist. And this was another big step for me because this is where I got my first major platform in STEM. As America's top young scientist for 2018, I was able to spread my ideas about STEM. I was able to talk about spreading awareness for pancreatic cancer, talk about my inventions, talk about the importance of STEM education for students um, so others could see the importance in science fairs as well. So now let's move on to my next experience, which was the Broadcom Masters. And so Broadcom Masters, although this is a national level competition, it starts at your local level. So if you're a student who's looking to apply, right, you start at your local level, you compete in your school or district level fair, you qualify to your state fair, and then you can qualify for like a national level competition like Broadcom Masters. And so after winning my state fair, I submitted my project to the Broadcom Masters competition through like the online application. There was 1,800 entrants. They select 300 semifinalists and then 30 top finalists. And so when I was in eighth grade, I submitted my project. And then when I was a freshman in high school, so like the beginning of ninth grade, I uh, flew to Washington, D.C. to compete in the final competition. And this is where... I feel like for Broadcom Masters, this is something that's really unique to their competition is you get to spend a week with other like-minded students in STEM. And this is a really big deal because it really opens your eyes to the, the vastness 
of the science community. It's not just PhD level researchers who are working in the lab. Yes, they're of course going to come up with the biggest innovations that are going to change our world. But high schoolers and middle schoolers can also come up with those ideas and can also make changes and make, uh, make an impact in their communities as well. Um, and so Broadcom Masters, getting to hear about the amazing work that my peers were doing uh, was, was really enlightening. And of course, just a whole lot of fun uh, spending that week in DC. And so you get judged by experts who are really able to, to ask, you know, deep questions to, to like bring about the next, uh, to, to get, get feedback uh, for students' research and also ask those questions so that students can think about like the deep aspects of their project to bring it to the next level. So after the competition, I continued working on this. And eventually in high school, I was able to compete in the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium. So this is a competition for high school students only. Um, and so in this competition, you write a research paper, you compete in your local level fair. Um, so this here is a picture at the uh, in Bremerton, Washington, uh, with the Washington and Oregon Joint Junior Science and Humanities Symposium. So they select I believe 12 students from each region to come and compete in this local fair based on your research papers. Um, and I think nationwide there's around 12,000 entrants. Uh, and then the top students from each of the local levels qualify for the national competition. And so I competed in this in this competition. Uh, I'm a senior now for for the all three years of my high school uh, experience. And I, I honestly loved it a lot because the unique thing about JSHS is that you learn a lot more about pr presentation skills and science communication. Uh, through the poster board format with Broadcom Masters, um, I mean, this Three Young Scientist Challenge had like a presentation, yes. But with the poster board format I was used to in like my local science fairs and at Broadcom, um, I feel like it was more about connecting with a judge one-on-one -on -one and you know answering questions and explaining your project to them whereas with the jshs fair it's more about uh you know with the oral presentation partic in particular you're really building this whole story uh you're telling like a, a 20 slide story of your research journey uh to the audience to the judges and so that's something that's a little bit unique about this competition you develop another aspect of those um presentation skills and so this was a, a really uh, big thing in my personal development as like a scientist and just a person in general. And of course, I had a lot of fun at both the local level and the national level I went to. So ninth grade, it was uh, held virtually, 10th grade also virtually due to COVID. Uh, 11th grade, I was luckily able to go in person to Albuquerque, New Mexico and compete in the national level competition. Um, and so I won top honors in this competition and I've had, you know, an amazing experience doing so. And if you're a high school student, a middle school student who wants to compete at in these in these competitions, I'd highly recommend you to do so. Uh, really, you know, contact your teachers, uh, contact your local fair directors to get involved in this because these are amazing opportunities, like once in a lifetime experiences that you definitely will regret missing out on. So the International Science and Engineering Fair is the world's largest pre-collegiate science fair. And something that really struck me about this competition is there's so many research categories. I competed in biomedical engineering from 10th grade to 11th grade, and I competed in uh, computational biology and bioinformatics in my freshman year. Um, um, and so you're judged by PhD level scientists and really top researchers who are doing amazing work at institutions who will, uh, the feedback that they give you while reviewing your posters can truly, you know, uh, can truly contribute to your project moving forward and point out issues and point out next steps that will uh, bring your project to the next level. And so in my freshman year, uh, I competed in my local state fair. I was able to qualify for ISEF um, from, from Team Oregon. Uh, and 10th grade and 11th grade, it was pretty much the same process, but uh, I was actually able to compete. So 10th grade, it was held virtually. I competed in the biomedical engineering category, placed third. And then last year in May, uh, as, a, as a junior in high school, I won first place in biomedical engineering and also won the Young Scientist Award. And so... Um, beyond the competition aspects, like winning these various prizes, uh, of course, incredibly exciting. You can see my face here um, at the, in Atlanta, Georgia, at the, at the final competition, right? But 
beyond that, I feel like something that's really unique to ISEF is this uh, is this hugeness, right? You have 1,800 people. Like, can you imagine that? This place was as big as an airport. I felt like that that huge, huge, uh, the scale of it is just is, is, is amazing, right? There's people coming around the world. Their mentors, um, their teachers are coming and, uh, and students who have qualified from their country fairs to come to the U.S. and uh, compete at ISEF. And so uh, I feel like that's what makes ISEF unique. It's just that vastness. And it makes you realize that, you know, I'm part of this bigger science community of high schoolers who are making a difference and who, who love STEM. Uh, and hopefully that should, if you get a chance to compete in this fair, you'll realize that, you know, you do get that motivation from being there to continue in your discipline as well uh, and, and inspire for excellence through ISEF. So finally, I wanted to talk about a bonus one, and this one is not a science fair, but it's a science opportunity. It's called the Research Science Institute. And I'll read a little bit of this. Basically, every summer, 80 of the world's most accomplished high school students gather at MIT for the Research Science Institute. And so this is a program sponsored by the Center for Excellence in Education and MIT. Um, and I was uh, able to go this last summer. Uh, the, the selection process is quite competitive. I made it, I, I've made a video about you know my selection process and my experience going through that. But uh, I don't think I talked too much about my experience at RSI and what I did there. Uh, so I wanted to cover that in this video, actually. So at RSI, I feel like, you know, I won't get into any specifics, but it's 80 students, but you spend six weeks with them. You connect with people uh, on a very you know, deep level. You make deep friendships that for many people last a lifetime, right? These are people that you might go to college with. These are people you might, you know, create a company with. These are people you might work on some amazing research that wins a Nobel Prize one day. Um, and so RSI, that's the, that's the difference, right? You know, one week here, uh, three days or whatever in JSHS, one week in Broadcom Masters, two or three days at the 3M Young Scientist Challenge versus six weeks at RSI. You go through the research experience. You're not just bringing your final project. You go from start to finish. You go from background research to you know uh, coming up with a fully fledged research project. Um, and so RSI combines both the research that you do at uh, an institution there or a company there. Uh, I personally wo worked with MIT uh, while I was at RSI on modeling brain tumors with deep learning. Um, and at the same time, it combines that with uh, two things. Here uh, in the description, it only mentions scientific theory. And I, I think it talks about that because of the, the lectures that they do um, and the, the tutoring that you kind of get. But in addition to that, I, I'd like to add the, the experience of working with other students, you know, talking to other students about their research and that cross-discipline, interdisciplinary finding that occurs. Um, when I'm like a computational biology person, who's talking to uh, someone who's working on their environmental science project. There's a, there's a sort of like this interdisciplinary like thing. And I feel like uh, to elaborate a little bit more on that, I feel like when you first think about it, it feels like, hey, how will this person you know, contribute to my research in any way, right? They might give some totally different idea uh, based on something they've heard in their field. But I'd reject that entirely. While at RSI, I would hear about my peers' research projects, and we would suggest things for each other's projects. We would suggest ideas uh, and clarifications for each other's papers to 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 improve them and to grow together. And so that's something that you don't get at these other fairs because here you're just, you know, bringing your finalized research that you spent your year working on. Here you're working on your research uh, with your scientists and with your mentors, but also informally with other students. And so that's something that RSI is really unique for, and that's what makes it uh, you know, a, a once in a lifetime opportunity. I keep saying that, but all of these are just amazing opportunities. Um, and so if you found any of the, them interesting, please Google them. Um, but that being said, I want you to watch one of these next two videos here on the screen. One of them is on how you can actually get research opportunities. And the second is how to do research and my experiences in those, like publishing papers, writing papers, how to find mentors, um, how to conduct your background research, how to do, uh, how to get results, do all of that. I cover those in these two videos. So please check them out. That being said, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.